In our applications, we often write data processing code that operates with strings or various collection types such as strings or lists. And Kotlin standard library provides all kinds of functions for this type of tasks. My name is Anton and today we are going to use some of the standard library functions to solve the challenge from Advent of Code 2020 Day 6. I know you like this type of videos a lot, so before we proceed, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And now let's start with the challenge. So the task is about calculating the counts from the custom declaration forms. The form asks a series of 26 yes or no questions marked with A through Z, and we need to identify the questions to which anyone in the group of people answered yes. Let's take a look at the input file. The answers by each individual are represented by a single line in the file, and these answers are grouped and the groups are separated with the blank line. The requirements say that we should be counting all the unique answers within the group and we need to find a total of all the counts for all the groups. Okay, let's start. First, we need to read in the data from the file and we can use java.io.file class for that. And then use the read text function that comes from Kotlin standard library. The groups are separated with the blank lines, so we can split by using just the two line separators. At this point, we have a list of strings where each entry is a multi-line string that represents the answers by a group of people. We need to calculate the count for each group in the list, so there is going to be an iteration involved. I'm going to iterate over the list, calculate the count for each group, and add it up to a total. For each group, the count is the number of unique answers within the group. So we need to actually solve it by adding all the individual characters into the set, and then the size of the set will be the number that we are looking for. We only need to remove the new line character from it. So before converting the string to a set, I'm going to call the replace function and remove the new line characters. Now we just need to call the count function and add the result to a total. This is a very naive solution. It works, but we can do better. Every time you see an iteration over the list with some operations with each of the elements, chances are high that there is a standard library function that we can use for this task. Indeed, if I hit Alt Enter, I can see that the ID suggests to convert this loop into a sum by function. I'm using an old version of the ID plugin, and the sum by function is actually deprecated, uh, and we can use some off function instead. We just eliminated the need for a mutating variable in our code and that's nice. Let's see what else we should do in this challenge. Okay, it seems there is a sudden change in requirements as it usually happens and we need to calculate the counts a bit differently. So this time we should count only those questions to which everyone in the group answered yes. So for this specific example it means that we need to find an intersection of all the characters for all the answers within the group. So for instance, here we have AB and AC in the answers and the intersection is just A, meaning the count will be one. So let's see how can we approach this. Uh, we need to iterate over the list of answer groups and each group is represented by a multi-line string and each line in that string represents answers by an individual person. Hence, we need to split the string to analyze the individual answers. We need to find the characters that are present in each line in the group, and each line is a set of answers by an individual person, so we will end up with a number of sets of characters, and we need to find the characters that are included in all the sets. Remember what I told you about iterating over the lists and uh, performing any operations with all the elements of the list? Uh, here we have the same pattern again. We are iterating over the answers, and we are transforming each answer, which is actually a string, to a set of characters and then adding this result to the list of sets. So actually the ID can make a transformation for us 
if, he, if I hit Alt Enter, I can replace this code with a map function. Let's check what the type of the uh, result is. It says list of set of characters. And now we need to find an intersection. Luckily, intersect is a standard library function in Kotlin. So naively, I could use the first element from the list of the sets uh, as a temporary result, and then override the set by the result of the operation by intersecting itself with every next element in the list. You obviously remember what I told you about iterating over the list of elements. In this specific example, we need to reduce the number of sets to a single set that holds the common elements that are present in all the sets in the list. So we can actually use the reduce function from the standard library and use the result of intersect operation to populate the final result. And what we actually need is the count and the total of all the counts for all the groups. This is a reasonably straightforward solution to the problem, but I think we can definitely do better. First of all, we can see there is a loop. Uh, we, can, we, we already know that we can use sum of function to calculate the total. And secondly, we can see that in the same loop, we have two different blocks of code that uh, do different things. The first part of the block is actually making transformations to the input. And uh, the second part is what does the calculations. So we can refactor this code a little bit to, to form a nice looking transformation and calculation pipeline instead of iterating over the list of elements. So to implement the first part, we can use the map function that iterates over the groups and then we split each group into the lines and map each line into a set. The result is the list of sets of characters. So we can now apply the second part of our pipeline to find the intersection of all the sets and calculate the total. And we can use that by using the sum of function where the block of code will execute the reduce function. This code looks concise, but it's not perfectly readable yet. You can see that we are using the implicit variable name it in both code blocks. First, in the part where we transform the grouped answers into the sets, and then we are working with the sets to find the intersections. And the variable type in the different blocks is also different. To make this code more readable, it makes sense to uh, explicitly name the lambda argument instead of using the implicit name. So for instance, in the first part of the pipeline, we are working with the individual group of answers. And in the second part of the pipeline, we are working with answer sets. Let's give our final answers some meaningful names, like first answer and the second answer. And let's print out those answers as well. And let's finally run our solution. So according to the example, it's 11 in the first part and 6 in the second for the sample input. Let's check. 11 and 6. At this point, we can also make an observation that, that the first part of the challenge could actually be solved exactly in the same way as we did for the second part, but using the different operation, instead of intersect, we could use union, because that would produce a unique set of characters of all the sets that we are working with. We can verify that. Instead of intersect, I'm going to use a union function and see if both answers will be 11. So we could actually use this code for both parts of solutions, but using the different operation. So we solved this challenge successfully, and along the way we learned about a few nice functions for working with collections, such as sum of, map, reduce, intersect, and union. I hope you liked the solution, and uh, let me know in the comments below. You can read about the solution in more details in our blog post. You will find the link in the description to the video. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, have a nice Scotland.